never say never. I always told to myself that never in my life I will buy a record player. Why? I was fine with digital actually. You have in your phone all the music that you want, you don't need space, you don't need to take care of your records, to spend a lot of money, to buy records, have problems to find your records, wash records. But this is wash records. You do like that, you put it here, like that, you turn it on, take this one, very carefully you remove the dust, then you take this one, I will let you also in the description, you do like that, and you do like that. finish and you let you dry a little bit so you saw very easy but till you don't do it you don't know it right of course there is also more and better way to clean it but for beginners and actually is what I also doing is doing like that and it's working actually I could remove a lot of dust from the records after I unbox it when was new. So what about turntables and records? Guys, in my opinion, take care of your music is meaning take care of something that you love. Digital is boring in my opinion. If you want something perfect, go digital, but it's boring. If you want something different, let's move with turntables. Today we will start to speak about turntables and cover the main aspect of the turntable, how it's composed and what is the history behind this beautiful piece of gears. I will divide this video in two parts because it will be a little bit long, but we will have a lot of fun and I will show you how you can buy a record like this, plug it and play it. Not plug it and play it, I say plug it and play it. So, a small jump and let's do it. So what is a record player or a turntable? Very simple, it's a device that is able to convert the mechanical movements in analog signal. A device for the mechanical and analog reproduction of sound. To speak about turntable, we have to go a little back to 1877, when Thomas Edison invented the cylinder phonograph. Actually, this project was realized in 1857 from Edward Leon Scott, a Frenchman who invented the phonoautograph, but was an instrument that was able only to capture and doing a physical drawing of the sounds without reproducing. The cylinder phonograph invented from Thomas Edison was a recording machine able to record into a rotary cylinder foil the human voices or precious sounds thanks to a manual needle that was moving up and down, making groups with a depth that varied according to how loud or soft his voice was. And for the playback, very easy was applied the reverse process. A turn of the wheel back to the starting point would permit listeners to hear the sound. Okay, maybe not so easy at this time, but was a great invention. So, thank you, Thomas Edison. In the 1880, Alexander Graham Bell made several improvements and introduced the graphophone, adding wax rather than the foil to the design to improve the sound waves quality and longevity. But only in the 1887 we will be able to see a design more closer to our modern record player when Emily Berliner invented the gramophone for home entertainment. At first the discs were commonly made from shellac and only in early 1930 
will be start to see first vinyl records and LP long play records. Modern record player working almost in the same times of the phonograph, but instead to use a large horn to amplify the sound during playback, it's used electromagnetic devices to convert sound's vibrations from a spinning record into electrical signal, which are then connected to an amplifier and phone stage that will power our beautiful loudspeaker. And now let's move and see the parts that are composing a record player. My suggestions is, in a record player, the mechanics is very important. So don't buy cheap gears. Look for a turntables that have a good quality mechanics because these will be very important in the audio reproduction. We will see that are very thin, very small parts, these needles that are swimming in these very, very, very small grooves. So any kinds of vibrations or something wrong will be translated in a distortions or actually could also damage your records. So the quality of your record player is very important. First we have the dust cover and this one in my opinion is very important because it's not protect your turntable and your records from dust. In my case also from my kids because they're coming here when we listen record player and they want to put the finger oh what's that so have a dust cover in my case is very important. One thing about the dust cover most of the times is a plastic material so could get very easily scratches when you clean it. So my suggestion is to use something soft, probably a brush, something soft to avoid some scratches. And if you have the possibility, like me, use your finger in this spot finger area to open it and close it. Of course, if it's not a problem for you, then it's fine. But I don't like to see finger prints and scratches. As soon you are finished with spinning, just close it to avoid any dust inside. Then we have the plinth, this is the main base of your turntable. It holds all the parts together and you can find it in so many shapes, designs, colors. Just pick the one that you prefer. I love this vintage style, but in the market you can find also something more modern. Under the plinth you got three or four feet usually four. Sometimes are adjustable and is giving you the possibility to leveling your turntable because this is very important. But if it's not adjustable, be sure to have at least a rack where you can work on the level of your turntable. Then we have the platter that is the part of your record player that is pin and support your records. And next we have the motor that is connected to the platter allow it to spin. You can find two types of motor transmissions, direct drive and belt drive. In the direct drive the motor is situated directly below the platter, you don't see it actually, because it's inside the plinth. In the belt drive the motor is on side, out or internal to the plinth and spins the platter using a rubber belt. This one for example is belt drive, but don't worry too much about it. In the future we will speak more about these two types of transmissions. And then we have the mat that is placed between the plinth and your record to reduce vibrations caused by the motor and prevents the metal plate from scratching or damage your underside of the records. You can find it in different material, felt, rubber, cork or leather. Now actually I'm fine with the rubber, but feel free to experiment to find one that is more closer to your taste. And next we have the spindle, center pin that is held to your records on the platter. Sometimes you can see also vinyl records clamp or disc stabilizer. I generally don't use it, but also feel free to test it if you want. Just be sure to check again the speed of your spinning because could probably change because you will have more weight on the print. How to do this? Also we will see it in the parts 2 of this video. And now let's speak about uh, probably the most important and also the most interesting part that is the tone arm with your cartridge and stylus. The stylus or needle tracks the grooves of your record. And there are more different types of stylus, from budget to 
esoteric and expensive stylus. Conical is the simplest and the mostly used. It's spherical tip that normally touches the corner of your record's groove walls and works fine with low to moderate price turntable. Elliptical has two radii, the front radius being wider than the side radius. The front radius rides in the center of your groove like the conical, while the smaller side radius moves more in contact with your groove's walls. More contact delivers a higher level of fidelity. Microlinear almost duplicate the shapes of the casting stylus that produced the original masterpiece. This stylus is able to track portions of the grooves that other stylus cannot reach. It's extremely accurate with a more flat frequency response. And then we have the Shibata, was originally developed to play for channel quadriphonic records. Has two radius similar to the elliptical stylus, however the radio of the Shibata allow for more surface contact and effective pickup of ultra high frequencies with less group stress and distortions. But more expensive stylus, more esoteric, more audiophile is not meaning that the quality of the sound reproductions will be better because they will require a more perfections in the setup, more accuracy in the setup, they will require a high hand turntable and also they will require a record that is clean and don't have too much dust, otherwise you will really hear everything and sometimes it's not nice. So if you want to move this on this type of stylus be sure to have all these things. And then we have the cartridge that is attached to the head shells with the screw and is sending the electrical signals through four color wires, white, red, blue and green for left and right channel and respective grounds. But you don't have to be worried about connecting cables and align your cartridge because a turntable like that is coming that is already finished and ready to play. But for sure in the future we will see also how to do it because I will do it for test also different type of uh, cartridge on my turntable and I will show you how to do everything. We can find two types of cartridge MM moving magnet and MC moving coil. In the moving magnets the stylus travel through the groove transferring mechanical force up a cantilever to a magnet attached to the other end. The cantilever and magnet move interacting with a coil that generate the electromechanical signal. In the moving coil the mechanical process is opposite to the moving magnet design. The stylus transfer up the cantilever to a coil rather than a magnet. The cantilever and the coil move interacting with the magnet that generate the electromechanical signal. The MC structure has a much lower mass than MM cartridge that allow the stylus to react quicker to the changes in the record groove, resulting in more detailed reproductions, but the lower mass also results in lower output voltage that requires the use of step-up transformer or preamp. So for an entry-level turntable I will go definitely with a moving magnets cartridge and the result is really amazing. Also because MC are more expensive, good ones are more expensive and will require a better setup and a better amplification. That for entry levels is in my opinions not a good choice. Next we have the tone arm. It's not only holding the cartridge and the head shell, but inside it contains also the four cables of the electrical signal. The arm also moves along with the stylus allowing it to ride the internal groove of your record, thanks to the pivot ball's bearings. At the end of the tone arm you can find the counterweight, that is balance the tone arm and controlling the tracking force, that is simply the weight of your needle pressing on the records. Should be not too much heavy or too much light, because too heavy could damage your needles and also your records, and too light could skip between the grooves. So how much should be? It depends from your cartridge. It's important to look for the manufacturer specs. In my case with the Orthophone 2 M Red should be between 1.6 and 2.0. It depends from your taste. So I was something in the middle, 1.8, that for me was already fine. But it's also important to check for the weight of your single cartridge that must not exceed the specifications of your torn arm. For example, with my tone arm I can use cartridge with a maximum weight of 9 grams. So it's very important to check it. This one I think that is 7.2, so it's fine. 
Next we have the anti-skate. It prevents the skating of the tone arm, maintaining equal force on both the inner and outer sides of the stylus, to keep it balanced within the grooves. Due to physical aspects, the tone arm tend to be pulled to the middles of the records, and the anti-skate is like a counter force that is preventive. Next we have the queen device. It's located closer to the gimbal and it lowers and lifts the needles from the records. But why we should use something like that when we can just pick up the tone arms with our hand and place it on your records? Very simple, because our hands is not so precise and the queen device is prevent from lateral movements and quick punch on the record that could damage your stylus and cruise records. In the end we have the start and speed selectors. Some have start and stop button. In my case I have only off and speed selectors. Remember what I told you about RPM, revolution per minute? Most of the time you will use 30T RPM. But some records are also 45. And that's it, I try to be very simple for not annoying anyone. In the next video we will doing an unboxing of a turntable like that. I will show you how to mount the plea and connect the belt motor drive doing first adjustments that will be really plug and play and not plug and play like I told you. So plug and play and you can just pick your record, clean it a little bit and play it and have fun. Will be very simple and easy, coming soon. So stay tuned, subscribe to my channels to support my words and have a good music.